Okay, I guess um, we'll get started. So, the eagle eyed amongst you will have noticed that I'm actually the wrong Steve. Um, Steve Dake, um, the PTL until very recently of Heat Project, was assigned to do this session. And um, for those of you who don't follow the, the dev lists, um, Steve unfortunately had to step down from the PTL role quite recently. And so um, I'm standing in um, on his behalf and I'm going to present this session. Um, Steve stepping down is obviously a loss to the team. He's done a great job of guiding us through incubation and uh, um, guiding the project to the point where we're promoted to incubated for Havana Cycle. Um, but we're extremely fortunate. We've got a really strong dev team. I think any one of the active core devs could probably step into the PTL role and do a great job. I'm proposing myself as a candidate for that role and we're gonna go through the formal process once we all get back from Summit. Um, so I'm just gonna go over a summary of the history of heat, an overview of what heat is and what it does. I'm not gonna do a massively technical um, uh, presentation of that stuff because I know a lot of you are already aware, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone in the room is aware of our goals um, and the, the summary of the, 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 the level where we sit in the OpenStack um, ecosystem. I'm gonna c cover the main features which we've implemented for Grizzly and give you an idea of the roadmap for Havana as we understand it at the moment. Um, I'm really excited having been in attendance this week. We've had some really great design sessions. We've had some really great positive feedback from a number of other companies. It's sounding like we're gonna get contributors from other companies on the team. And um, we've had a relatively small team. Um, mo all, of, all but one of the core devs at the moment are from Red Hat and it's gonna be enormously beneficial to have a more diverse um, set of contributors. And hopefully we're gonna have more manpower to do more cool stuff on this project. So I think we've achieved a lot in the last six months, in fact, in the last year. But I'm really, really excited now about what we're gonna do in the Havana cycle. So here's just a brief overview of the history of heat. So we only started a year ago, and I think we've managed to achieve really quite a lot in that year. Um, we've gone from having nothing to having some software which actually works and is useful to people. And um, I think that to, to have reached the point where people can actually make use of this software and it can be considered for inclusion as part of the coordinated release of OpenStack is something which we can be justifiably proud of. So we've got 25 people who contributed to Heat over the past year. There's nine core members, and I think there's about probably about five or six of us who are contributing on a regular basis recently. There's about 1,900 commits um, making up the, the history in our, in our repository. There's roughly 34,000 lines of code that have included tests, but are not, in, not including OpenStack comment and are not including comments. So, you know, that's a bit of a wishy-washy number, but it gives you a rough idea of the kind of, the kind of quantity of stuff we've churned out. So we have this concept of resources, which is what you define in your stack template, which is maybe an instance or maybe some other logical um, abstraction, which allows you to build up your picture of your infrastructure. And so we've implemented 37 different resource types. So the takeaway from that is we're not just about orchestrating launching instances. We can orchestrate all of the core services. We integrate with all of the core services. Not Solometer yet, but <coughs> I'll come to that in a minute. And it provides a way of consuming OpenStack services um, in a way that's simple. You don't need to know anything about all of the underlying APIs. You don't need to learn all the details of all of the underlying services. And it makes OpenStack core services consumable to a wider audience. It allows you to do deployment of complicated infrastructure and applications in a simple and repeatable way, and it aggregates the APIs underneath into a single template versionable text file. So this is just an overview of where we sit in the, the, the OpenStack project ecosystem. So you can consider us as being something which is layered above the core Nova Glance, Swift, Quantum, Cinder. And we talk to those APIs and we provide a template interface and a REST interface <coughs> above that. Horizon can talk to Heat, and there was a, some sessions with, with some really great work where we're hopefully gonna have, quite soon, some capability to interface with Heat through Horizon, because um, that's a gap which we have at the moment. And at the moment, we have CloudFormation compatible and a native REST API. Um, a really hot topic this week has been the template language we use. So the first cut for Heat was 
hey, let's implement a CloudFormation syntax. And that's worked pretty well for us because it's allowed us to have some very tangible near-term goals. We've had some documentation for the way Amazon do things, which we've been able to sometimes look at and think, hey, this is the way we're going to do it. But there seems to be a real need in the community and a real desire to do something which is going to provide a superset of that functionality. And so I'm really excited, and I think that we've made some great progress on that this week. So um, there's going to be some, some good work in the next few months in that area, I predict. So this, the, as I've already mentioned, you have an abstract configuration of all the core services into a single template which can be treated just like source code. And so you can deploy your infrastructure via this template. Those templates can also be nested, which is a really powerful feature. So you can build up building blocks of your infrastructure and layer them and compose your templates um, such that you don't need to have one enormous template. You can um, treat things in a modular way. And again, it allows you to start treating your cloud deployments a lot more like code, and you, know, you can version uh, these templates which you're producing. Um, another couple of really cool features of Heap is we support um, basic HA functionality, and we also support auto-scaling. So again, we've had some great discussions around this area. I think there's potential for um, a lot more innovation in both of these features. Um, we're going to be moving to integrating with Silometer very soon, um, where we'll be able to make use of, use of much more advanced alarm um, features. And I think that there's going to be potential for HA and auto-scaling to be really valuable additional value in, in, in addition to just orchestrating the initial deployment. Um, <coughs> we also support uh, deploying metadata update after the initial deployment um, to the various resources. This is most useful if you've got instance resources that need to periodically pull some reconfiguration data down. And we've got in-instance agents which allow you to do that. I know that the Triple O guys are making heavy use of that, and Clint, is Clint here? No, okay, so Clint Byram, um, recent new core member which working on the HP Triple O team, um, is looking at implementing rolling updates based on the in-instance metadata. So, summary is, there's a whole load of cool stuff which we do at the moment. There's an enormous pile of blueprints for Havana, and I think we're gonna be adding a whole load of new additional exciting features. I'm certainly excited about what we're gonna be doing in the next few months. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this slide, but I just wanted to give you an overview, if you're not already aware, of what our internal architecture looks like at the moment. This is pretty basic um, view of, of what, we, what we do at the moment, but it gives you an idea that this kind of probably looks quite similar to many of the other OpenStack projects. If you're familiar with, say, the way Nova looks internally, we have a s um, number of APIs which can scale horizontally. We talk via RPC to an engine, which is basically doing the orchestration scheduling and um, the core logic of what Heat is actually doing. Um, and very soon that will be scalable as well. And so we're gonna have this um, scalable service, which is in many cases very, very similar in topology to existing projects. We reuse um, a lot of stuff through Oslo and um, we've, from day one, we've tried to do things in the OpenStack way and um, make sure that we can encourage contributors from other projects because we're hopefully gonna have a fairly familiar code base for them. But this is another way of looking at what we're doing. So he takes in a stack template. We then process that, generate a dependency graph, um, and then we make a series of rest calls to all of the underlying services. So you can see there, there's a missing line to Solometer. That's a piece of work which we're planning to do during Havana. Angus is also core on the Solometer team. And uh, he's been doing some great work driving the functions, the features that we need in Solometer, which is gonna allow us to take a big step forward from our current um, basic metric and alarm evaluation logic. So this is to give you an idea of the resource types which I mentioned a minute ago. We implement all of these at the moment. Um, you'll notice that there's two sections. We've got the AWS compatible section, and this is kind of what we started with. We um, wanted to say, hey, we can launch this CloudFormation template on OpenStack, which in itself is a pretty cool feature in my opinion. But then more recently, um, we've uh, started added, adding native resource types, which in most cases are a fairly thin wrapper um, above the underlying OpenStack services. And this is gonna provide an uh, even more direct way of of consuming the underlying APIs without having to know all the details of the underlying API and with all of the advantages of having a single template 
um, which I mentioned earlier on. So I, I anticipate that this um, OpenStack native section is going to grow substantially in the next few months. Um, and hopefully that's going to go hand in hand with some of the template rework which we've been discussing this week, such that you will be able to deploy um, any topology you like without having to care about the AWS template syntax or the AWS resource naming. When that seems to be something which people want and we've paid attention to that this week and there's been some great discussions and so I'm confident that we're going to be able to make good progress on that in the Havana cycle. So this is just to give you a summary of what we've been doing through Grizzly. Um, as I've already mentioned, it's really quite a small team um, of guys hacking on this code. It's, you know, probably five, five or six of us who are working on this stuff regularly. And I think that we've managed to achieve really um, a lot of work in the last few months. We've fixed 144 bugs. We implemented 19 blueprints. Um, we added a new native REST API. Um, there's um, a, a fairly complete set of quantum resources, um, support for YAML templates, um, Python heat client. So now, again, this is about being similar to the way other OpenStack <coughs> projects work. We provide Python heat client, which gives you CLI tools and an API such that you can talk to our REST API. Um, we've got much improving um, uh, virtual networking and VPC resource support. Um, this is an area which we're still working on, but we're m m making some big steps forward in that area. Um, we now support the idea of updating a stack, which you've already deployed, and we're improving that such that our first approximation with that was that you just replace the resource. But that's in many cases not what you want to do. And so we're still working and improving that such that you can do much less interruptive updates to your topologies once you've, de once you've deployed them. We've implemented support for stack rollback, so you can automatically roll back a failed update. And um, again, I see this becoming much more advanced functionality as we go through Havana um, with the rolling updates work that is going on and uh, possibility to do things like stack snapshots. And um, the, the, the really, the sky's the limit with this stuff. There's a whole load of really cool features that we can look at adding. And um, the point is that we're doing what we've been doing since day one, which is to start with some very simple and basic functionality and then build it out. And so that's something which we've been concentrating on and uh, I think that we've made really good progress. So we've got native Swift resource type. We've got much improved security. Um, and that's again something which we've had sessions on this week and we're gonna be able to make good use of some of the work that's been going on in Keystone. Um, for example, the trusts work is gonna be extremely useful to us. And so there's a lot of these features. There's gonna be feature V2 in, in Havana. And so this takes me on to the Havana roadmap. Um, Zane, who is another core dev um, on the Heat project, has offered to come up and walk us through this. So Zane, do you want to? No, I think we just. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Um, Steve literally stepped up one week ago, I think, to to uh, take on the PCO job. So four, day, four days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so he's done a great job this week. And Thanks for that, but uh, we kind of we're big believers in the heat team of kind of uh, spreading the responsibility around, so that's why I volunteered to help out with this section. Um, so we've got a bunch of very exciting features planned for Havana. Um, so I'm just going to run through them very quickly. Uh, parallel resource creation. So at the moment, when we orchestrate your template, we are creating each resource one at a time, basically, um, and that's going to be very slow, especially if you've got. 100 Nova instances to spin up and they don't have dependencies on each other, then we can create those in parallel and that work I am pleased to say will be going in next week I think. Um, so that is imminent. Um, quantum support, um, we've been working, Steve Baker in the front row here has been working hard on um, VPC support. Um, so the VPC resources from AWS will be hopefully progressing a little bit more and those are kind of involve, evolving in concert with um, features that are getting added in quantum, so that's coming along. Um, by the way, we already have native uh, OpenStack quantum resources, um, so if what you're doing maps directly to what quantum provides, we can support that already. Um, rolling updates, this is one that Clint is um, very big on with the triple O. Um, basically, uh, Amazon implemented something similar to this recently, and it's 
when you're rolling out a very large deployment, um, especially, well, when you're updating a very large deployment, um, you want to be kind of not doing the whole thing in one hit. You want to be testing as you go, making sure that it's still working. Um, so we're going to be looking at that and, and implementing the solution for that. Um, the new template language, that's been the big uh, point of discussion this week. Um, so our new friends from Rackspace um, have come along with um, a lot of work that they've, um, they've been able to contribute and uh, a lot of good ideas. So basically what we're hearing, the message loud and clear this week, is that people want to orchestrate not just talking to their OpenStack services, which is what we've been concentrating on so far. They want a solution where their whole application can be defined in the template. And that's certainly what we're going to be work working towards. And um, Adrian and his team from Rackspace are going to be um, helping out with that work. So we're very excited about having them on board. Um, and also, they're going to be helping out with the auto-scaling API. So that's, um, that's cool as well. So right now, we, I guess there's two things to be done with auto-scaling. Number one, um, as Steve mentioned, we currently have a kind of hacked up internal implementation of auto scaling and in the Havana cycle that will be the event part, alarm part of that will be moving to Solometer. Um, so we're going to be in implementing integration with Solometer um, for the events and Heat is only going to be handling the, handling the auto scaling part. And the other thing that's planned is we're going to add an API to that so that auto scaling is available to everyone, not just people using Heat templates. So, and we're looking forward to working with Adrian and his other team um, to implement that. Um, okay, so I've covered. Um, update stack improvements. So, I think a very big part of orchestration is not just um, creating your stack in a, in a replicable way, but also, you know, being able to update it and you know you can have your template and version control, and you can see what updated. Um, and rather than having to go through all the APIs and every single update you do, you have to <coughs> invent a new way of going through all the APIs, and make sure it happens in the right order, and all the right things happen. Um, Heat can handle that for you. Um, at the moment, where it's working, we have um, some pretty basic stuff. Um, there's a lot of resources that need to be. Um, created or destroyed and recreated at the moment um, when you update a stack. Um, so we're, we're going to be looking at trying to move as many of those as possible over to um, kind of rolling updates where you don't have to destroy the resource um, to recreate it. So there'll be less interruption. Um, security, so there's a couple of things there. Um, one is how do we, as kind of a, an agent for the user, um, Heat has to have a kind of a long running relationship with some of these resources, like auto scaling is a good example. Um, Heat has to be sitting there and when you get an auto scaling event, you need it to spin up a resource. You don't want to be asking the user, hey, should I spin up a resource? Can you give me your credentials again? I lost them. Um, and the good news is there's some new features in Keystone that will allow us to do that in a very secure way. And that will be happening in Havana Cycle. And the other thing is when you have um, agents in your instances which are reporting back data um, to Heat or indeed Solometer, um, how can we secure those and make sure that that, that data is signed um, without exposing any of your user credentials to anything in the instance. Um, and there'll be some improvements for that coming as well, I believe. So Steve Carter's been working on that yep. very hard. Um, native resource types, so we have a few, as you saw in the, the previous slide, I think, um, OpenStack native resources. Um, and we're going to be implementing more of those. We're going to be trying to cover everything in OpenStack um, and we'll be surfacing features that are kind of unique to OpenStack and they're not necessarily Amazon features which you see in Amazon um, uh, resource types. And our <coughs> philosophy on this is all the resources are pluggable right now, um, so it, it should be very much up to the operator of the OpenStack cloud to decide which resources they want to deploy. 
Um, so if you want to deploy a cloud that doesn't have any, open, uh, any Amazon resources, you should be able to do that. And if for some reason you want to deploy one that doesn't have any OpenStack native resources, you should do that too. Um, and we're going to be um, implementing these features to make that probably a configuration option, so that'd be really easy to just turn off all the Amazon stuff if you so desire. Um, stack suspend resume. This is basically, um, this came from some, some folks who are actually using um, Heap right now, so that's exciting. And uh, what they want to do is spin up a stack and have it kind of ready to go, but not necessarily running and using up resources in the cloud. Um, so we're going to be looking at the uh, kind of suspend resume thing where you can maybe shut down your Nova instances but spin them up again very quickly. Um, and finally, load balance as a service is now, I believe, available in Quantum, so um, we'll be implementing a native resource, um, or a native resource type for that quite possibly, but also a, an AWS resource type for that. Um, right now we have a solution for load balancing which is <coughs> consists of us spinning up a Nova instance with HA proxy on it. Um, so that will move over to using the load balance as a service API. And we've also, um, you know, we're hoping that database as a service is going to make it into OpenStack sometime. Um, and we'll be, we also have a similar solution for that. We're spinning up another instance. So hopefully we'll be able to move to that API when it becomes available. Um, our policy on that is kind of, if something um, moves into incubation or integration, we'll probably um, support a plugin. But there's nothing to stop people from developing plugins out of tree as well. So, um, Thanks, Lee. Yeah, yep. uh, do you want to stay up here and we do a Q&A? Sure, yeah. um, so the only point to make about I'll the robot. Yeah, guys, do you want to do you come up here? This is not necessarily an exhaustive list. I've tried to pick some of the features that I'm aware of and I think are likely to happen during the Havana cycle. If there's stuff that's important to you, your company, or use case for heat, talk to us about it, raise blueprints, come and talk to us on IRC. Um, you know, we're very open to new ideas and we want feedback from people who actually want to use this stuff. You know, I think um, we've got some really good capabilities at the moment and you know, we're really very happy to um, engage in discussions that shape the direction we go in. And so come talk to us. So in closing, please come and get involved. If you're interested in trying heat, come and talk to us. If you're interested in writing some code or some documentation, even better, please um, <laughs> um, then come and talk That's to us thing we're to work on. Yeah, yeah yeah so that probably should have been on the roadmap you know we're aware you know there's some good stuff in the wiki it's hard to keep it up to date there's not that much in our doc tree so you know we're going to be very much working on that and if uh, you'd like to come along and help us with that or code or anything at all come and talk to us um, we're very open to contributors so yeah the that, 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 yeah, please, please come and talk to us, and we're happy for you to get involved. So what I'd like to do now is um, introduce um, us core devs. Did Clint, did, did Clint turn up? No? You, okay, so <laughs> there's also Clint Byram, um, but the four of us here, Steve Baker, Zane Bitter, Steve Hardy, Angus Salkeld. And so um, we've all been working on Heat for quite a while, and um, we're all excited, I would say, about um, the project and um, what we're going to be doing in the next few months. So. Uh, what I'd like to do now is just open up for sort of Q&A. Um, um, the microphone. Yeah, there's a microphone here. So if you can get to the microphone, that's probably going to help us hear what you're saying. Uh, could you uh, expand a little bit on um, the uh, support of an extended language for your template and to have external yeah. application in the ecosystem? So, 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 I mean, this has probably been the hot discussion of the week. Um, we knew that there was um, people asking for this but it's probably taken us a little while to really understand the driving requirements behind that. Um, and it wasn't just like, hey, we want something that doesn't look like a CloudFormation template. There's actual um, abstractions that we don't currently support, which are useful to people in, um, in real deployments um, of, 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 of stack templates or whatever terminology you want to use. And so the direction I think we're gonna end up going is um, defining a superset language, which is probably gonna be based initially on some of the DSL stuff and which Ratchface has been sharing with us. Um, and we've been talking to the guys who are interested in Tosca. And we need to figure out a way of basically having a superset language um, which allows you to do a non-lossy conversion from whichever template format you like into a heat-native format. 
So we're not interested in reinventing a completely new um, syntax. That's going to be a nightmare. Um, so it's going to be Tosca compatible? So Heat, at the moment, is not going to have a Tosca interpreter inside it. Not for Havana. That I, I, we have talked about this. That may be a nice thing to do at some point, but I think that we need to try and keep our goals achievable. Um, we've only got a few months to work on this stuff, and it's still going to be a huge amount of work defining an internal language, modifying our parser logic such that everything still works. And we're kind of um, tied to supporting the CloudFormation template syntax because we've got users who really rely on that stuff. So we're going we're gonna to support that. And we're going to, at the same time, have a parallel um, language which is also supported. And that will be a native syntax. And that should allow you to convert from DSL to um, the heat format. You should be able to convert from Tosca to that format via some fairly trivial script or translation layer, which will be outside of heat for, for the time being. And you know, we can revisit that discussion at the next summit if needs be. Um, that, that, that's the way I see it developing. Has anyone got anything to add to that? Yeah, so I mean, the idea for now is not that we're going to implement Tosca, but that we're going to make sure all the primitives are there that we can uh, implement something equivalent to Tosca and you'll be able to translate. Thanks. Hi, so, sounds like some exciting stuff. One of the uh, one of the areas that's near and dear to my heart is performance monitoring, and I wonder if you've given any thought to performance monitoring to doing the performance monitoring of heat itself. So, so when heat's off doing its thing, how many system resources is how many system resources is consuming? Is it running out of resource? Do I need bigger boxes? You know, et cetera. Yeah. So at the moment we've got a very basic, um, you know, we call it a CloudWatch implementation. We've got of heat itself. Of heat itself. Of heat itself. Short answer is no, but um, I, I mean, it's essentially a translation tool, so <coughs> at the moment all we're doing is converting from one API to another. We're not doing a lot of work ourselves. Um, saying that, you know, you will have to scale that eventually. We will, the biggest resource I would have thought would be actually the database. Yeah, we, we, we can uh, certainly talk about it offline, yeah. but it's yeah. something that we can certainly talk about. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. this is a, a general theme, which is um, we've gone from, you know, developing this to actually looking Because sometimes it gets kind of interesting if you run for like say ten seconds and don't realize it that you're consuming all of one of your CPUs. Yeah. You know, geez, to maybe need, and maybe need more threading in there somewhere. And yeah. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions? Yeah, if you can come up, if, if you can make it to the mic, that's that's yeah. going to be good. Just question about this auto scaling. So if I have a legacy application which has its like its own metrics for reporting to its users. I mean, not like not something that Silometer is going to be able to tell me, but something proprietary. And then I would have like, cause you know, some some scripts that I would need to to do. I mean, I, some some magic I need to do with the application to be able to actually auto scale it. So some yes. change so some configurations, yeah, something like that. So is so that so part so of the picture or? Yeah. So so our current model is um, to collect metrics from inside the instance via an instance agent that pushes to our um, CloudWatch compatible API. <coughs> So when we move to um, using Solometer as a metric and alarm source, I imagine there's going to be quite a lot of data that you can collect at the hypervisor level, which means that you don't need to worry about stuff like an instance credential. Can I just use um, some of my own metrics? Yeah, yeah so, so but I would expect us to also support the uh, ability to inject um, metrics, events, and alarms um, via an agent script um, uh, in a similar way to what we do at the moment. Angus, have you got yeah. anything to add? Well, and if your statistics is coming not from inside the guest, So I mean, the, 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 the idea is um, not to say that you must use metrics which are, produ which are produced by default by Solometer, but to give a flexible mechanism for, for doing this stuff. And I think the new auto scaling guys are very keen on quite a pluggable system. You know, so I think we, we want to be able to work with a range of uh, deployments. Yeah, we're moving in the direction of making it more configurable, not less configurable, for sure. What's your viewpoint on uh, other systems, other workflows and corporations and how that you may tie into to heat for approvals or change control records and things like that? So, I mean, one thing that I don't think heat wants to have to worry about is like business process. Okay. Um, you know, it, you could layer something which handles that kind of stuff on top of heat, but I think that we would need to worry about um, application topology and defining that in a concise and, and as simple as possible way. 
Um, in my view, you don't want to start mixing business process into that logic. It's something that should be very much a layer above and outside the scope for heat. So Excuse there was a discussion yesterday with uh, some folks who may or may not be here about um, workflow as a service. Um, I'm not sure we were talking about that. It was mm -hmm. more the talk, for instance, into audit scaling um, that you might be able to throw the logic off elsewhere to do the processing and then come back in and say, yes, I do want it or don't want it. That's what we were speaking to. Sorry. Yeah, yeah so, I, mean, so I was discussing this with Adrian last night and there is there is a possibility that for auto scale at least that uh, that could there could be some hooks in there. But uh, yeah, so I guess I mean the challenge is going to be defining an interface that enables that kind of stuff to sit on top. And if you've got requirements in that area, you know, let us know. Um, but I don't think we would want to bake that kind of logic into the core yeah, orchestration engine. The whole thing about getting involved. If if don't say oh it's not there and then move on to another you know or make it a whole other thing. Just come to us. Say I've a real use use case. This is my problem doesn't quite work the right way I want and either contribute a patch or add a blueprint and state and, and we'll get to it but you know that's the way to, to interact you know Thank you. Art, right? yeah, so ju yeah I mean just <coughs> speaking of patches um, you know, previously we've, we've been a, a, a core team doing most of the, of the development um, there's been a few external contributions I'm going to assume at some point we're going to have this avalanche of external contributions um, that we're going to review that we're going to have to review, and and it'll it'll be good when that happens to um, to have some more people ready to promote to core, um, and just like any other project in OpenStack, the way to do that is to um, you know have a have a, a history of, of good quality patch contributions into Heat, and to also um, just do reviews uh, for, for for what's there, um, <coughs> yeah, because. In theory, we're in this transition to, to, to being a project like, like most of the other projects where there's a lot of external contributions, um, a core team who have to spend a good chunk of their time just doing reviews rather than, rather than core development. Um, so yeah, but we, we have that transition to go through. Um, I was just going to add a little more to that. Um, there was a lot of neat discussion around this workflow as a service or putting in a declarative tasks in some way that's safe. And I think that addresses several of the, the questions people have raised. But um, you also have the mechanism that is great, um, where you can just drop a webhook in um, as part of the, the model for what's happening. And you can do, it's a simple model, but very powerful to achieve a lot of the things already. Yeah, so I mean, uh, yesterday there were some discussions in terms of lifecycle operations and ways where we could provide interfaces such that you can just register for a callback when a certain event happens in the stack lifecycle. So, you know, that's going to ena enable these kind of things to be layered on top of heat quite easily. And it's a question of understanding the use cases and making sure we provide sufficiently um, configurable interfaces. So the question was auto discovery of instances. Um, so, sorry, do you mind backing those kinds of things? So, I mean, at, at the moment, um, the instances which we know about are only the ones which have been defined by our stack template. So we don't support any. Um, you can't you can't have existing ins instances which get um, which get pulled into a into a heat stack. You need to define it through the template. Okay. So you're talking about something like you have all your stuff running already, and you try and turn that into a template. It's possible to kind of grab a list of all the resources that, I mean, in theory, not that we do this, but to grab a list of all the resources that users, it's, it's very difficult to work out what the relationships between those should be. Yeah. In, uh, hi, I'm Clint, by the way. Good morning. Um, in Triple, we actually have a use case for something similar, which is uh, since we're bootstrapping OpenStack itself, there is a moment where uh, Heat hasn't expressed its own uh, existence. And uh, so we do. We are looking at sort of maybe having an API for saying like, oh, there actually is an instance over there and this is the ID and it's in a stack um, because we would need that so that there might be some, some play there. But we're nearly out of time. Are there any more questions before we finish up?
Okay, well, thanks for listening. <laughs>